black news, I don't know who they are, and if they want to call me on a real number, I'll be happy to acknowledge that everything you said was correct. But thank you very much for that. Uh, Timothy Crump, please. <laughs> Timothy Crown, 432 Dunham Avenue, Marburn, New York. After they were charged with their responsibility to ensure all legal processes were adhered to, they now have been hired to undo what they painstakingly performed so that no unforeseen entity could take state a claim of impropriety as how can they now take issue with the very due diligence the taxpayer already paid a king's ransom for, for to guard the taxpayers? And we we'll the board of directors all payments by the city, whether it's for purchase of equipment, settlements of claims against the city, or specialized training for police officers. According to the minutes of board estimates meeting held on December 15, 2015, city officials voted two to one to approve the payment of the balance vote to Sentinel for phase work completed. Mayor Davis and the council president provided the majority. Maureen Walker, the comptroller of Stain. Razor. The Corporation Council also backed the payment, saying the financing was coming from Capital One Bank. The minutes showed the Comptroller asking why the city was even voting on a Sentinel payment. Sentinel had already brought the funding source to the table, and the monies were already approved and available, records show. The Corporation Council raised their explain that they went through the redundant, exhaustive process to just approve Capital One Bank that the city was on board, Gordon added. The minutes showed that then Mayor Davis also showed his frustration, complaining that the city had lost a year of savings because of bureaucracy, apparently in reference to benefits that they could have from LED lighting. Aaron Fox took the city and the taxpayers through a litany of costly, unnecessary bill hours. There has since been a breakdown in communication between the two sides since the new administration took office. The new mayor ignored several requests by Percival Clark, Sentinel's lawyer, for an in-person meeting to resolve the contact disputes according to letters reviewed by the Black Star News. Subsequently, Aaron Fox, the highly powered law firm, sent a Clark sent Clark a letter dated February 10, um, 2016, that the city was terminating the LE contract alleging material breach. Horton said the high perceived the high price firm is taking the city and taxpayers in um merry go round. The Black Star News couldn't determine how much Mount Vernon has paid the firm for the ongoing case since the messages were not returned. The city has opened un, an open ended contract with the firm, with the law firm. The contract clearly stipulates the only way the city can terminate its if there is clear threat to public safety, Horton noted, Aaron Fox was paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to illegally terminate a contract that they were professionally, morally, and legally bound to advise the city that they could not do. Now the matter is before the judge, Alan D. Shank, and who was likely ruled by early July on Sentinel's motion for summary judgment. A court decision has finally been reached on the matter considering a dispute between Terrence Horton and Principal of Sentinel Technology and the City of Mike Martin revolving around the installation of 4,400 highly efficient LED lights throughout Mount Vernon. For some time now, the LED light dispute has been dominating the front of both the Journal News and the Inquirer, Mount Vernon's hometown newspaper. The Journal News has been criticized by many providing readers with inaccurate information about the issue. While the Inquirer has empowered readers with true and accurate facts, the LED streetlight matter all started when the city of Mount Vernon put out an RFP in 2015 to have 4,400 lights replaced, and Harton submitted a bid, and his company was selected and granted the lucrative contract. Horton's company was selected by the city because he was offering incentives that would benefit the Mount Vernon populace and its youth, while the other bidders were not. Did you have more, sir? The mere thought that Mount Vernon's unemployment rate, the highest in Westchester County, will be positively impacted is very inspiring. And the promise that our youth will be trained in a very lucrative field is a measure of success for a city seeking to move ahead, said after Horton. Um, he was awarded the contract. Horton was the only bidder that offered to conduct an energy audit 
of this city streetlight system, Sentinel performed this critical mapping survey data collection and edit analytical compilation with its true with its own financing since the city did not have the funds to complete the crucial analysis. Furthermore, no one realizes that no other city in the tri-state region had ever performed this critical data compilation process by the Sentinel. Today everyone is using this method. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.